All right, all right. All right, welcome all the YouTubers. How's it going? It is 829. One minute, less than a minute till the market opens here. Looking at the October 6th contracts. I'll dial in the watch list here as we get going. We've been chopping back and forth since uh, 0745 Eastern and after a crazy, crazy bounce up in the pre-m uh, PM session. It was looking a little crazy there. The entire market, the entire globe was red. The entire globe was red. And then we decided to go on a $4 rage fest. Caught me off guard. Had a little bit of a futures loss there in the morning. But uh, yeah, cut that baby loose, and now it's on to greener pastures. So let's see what the day holds for us. Right out the gate, market is now open. We've got a green candle coming right off here. The three-minute POC bounce. QQQ doing the same. Everything on my watch list is bright green, except the VIX and the rates. The yields, the TNX here, uh, fell off hard from 153 to 148 ahead of the inflation data coming out here in a few minutes. That should be a key indicator on how things are going to go for the rest of the day. What's inflation going to do? Is it going to be transitory? Or is it going to blow through the roof? We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And either way, welcome, welcome. Let's have a good day. Had a fantastic day yesterday. It's one of those days that I like to put on my trade log. Because that's the uh, I actually had two big win categories in one day. That's nice to uh, check those off the list. 92 percenter and a 42, 46, 46 percenter. Yeah, 46 percenter. It was a great day. Great day. Anyway, right out of the gate here, we've got a 50 cent green candle shooting right up off the POC. Dad jokes early. That's right. Uh, Slip cut says in a premature and in, in pre, pre market brief, not premature. Pre-market brief, you mentioned rocketing to 440 or drilling to 420. What signals am I looking for to indicate a direction? Well, volume is going to tell me where to go. And then that VIX should play a volatility should tell me the other half of things here. O obviously, it'll be news driven. We have uh, inflation data coming out here in a few minutes. And if it's status quo, then no, no real big change here. It might even be bullish action. But if it's anything other, you can expect the continuation of yesterday's weakness. So... Anyway, we already rejected 431.50 twice. Yesterday, we rejected 432.22 once and came on down. So, yeah. Interesting, interesting action, to say the least. What's up, YouTubers? How's it going, Night Fox? How you doing? Big wick off that green. Stocks rebound. <laughs> they wasted no time posting that. It is a new month, so I wouldn't be surprised if we did have some bullish activity today before continuing on down tomorrow. But if you look at the one year, the one year looks very heavy. All signs point to a lower close today. On the one-year chart but we all know spy likes to do its own thing all we can do is react to what it gives us that big green candle out of the gate is sold off and here's a red candle right on top apple massive red candle there let's see what the rest of at microsoft was big red it wicked out there let's see what happens here amazon's climbing facebook google's all up uh nvidia big red candles on nvidia and coming down uh, Tesla right now is pretty much flat. So yeah. Looking around here, maintaining. And I'm going to keep an eye on the inflation data. That's the big proponent for this morning. Make sure you have an eye on that. <clears throat> right, red candle. There's a nice little green candle that flipped red. And double red on down. Interesting, interesting stuff.
So we popped up to 431.61, now 430.35. It's about a 36 cent red candle. Uh, selling volume is picking up steam here ahead of the data. Yep, probably, Hayden, which is a key indicator because usually this stuff is uh, is anticipated. The numbers are pretty well anticipated, especially the big money. So uh, the price action is very indicative of what we may expect. <clears throat> what you got, Justin? What'd you do? What'd you do? 15%, nice. Ten minutes. We have data in ten minutes. Fifty-five percent for Z Brenny. Would you get a little put scalp put? Nicely done. <clears throat> Red candle flips green. What makes me think that the market looks heavy on the one-year chart? You have massive engulfing red candles with not really not many wicks. And increasing selling volume. When I see that increase, 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 the selling volume is ramping up and taking this thing down. And then, of course, you've got the red candles, which are very indicative because you've got not very many wicks. Now, now, if I'm looking at this, let's flip out here. So if I see this right here, a big wick, that means that tells me the this candle came down, the buyer stepped in and brought it up, and we go higher. If I see this, if I see... Uh, let's see here. You know, this big old wick, this type of thing here. That tells me the buyers are stepping in and smoke that thing. But look, I mean, we didn't have any wicks. It's just full candle, full candle, increasing selling volume. This tells me that the, the sellers were here until the, until the last minute of the day yesterday, all day long. No buyers in sight. Increasing selling volume here. There's no support right here on the volume profile. Everything, and then that the EMAs are separating and they're continuing down. There's no flattening. Everything from a technical standpoint is pointing lower. Everything from a volume standpoint is pointing lower. So all my systems say it's going lower. Now it all it's all up to the news data that's coming out today to see are we really going to go lower? Not to mention, not to mention the entire globe was red. Like I'm I'm doing my pre market research. Everything the entire globe was red. Uh, so this here just seems to be a little by the weakness, maybe a scalp thing, a little bit of a little bit of action coming into the weakness of the market. But all in all. I don't see much strength here. And then if you look at tech, big red candles at the gate, a little bit of green coming back into it, but big red Nvidia, big red and Apple, Tesla is trading flat. So there's not too much strength. There's not, I'm, I'm looking at all the underlyings here. Uh, there's not a lot of strength in the underlyings. XLK has been down a little bit of green there, but down overall XLV is getting smoked. XLY red candle. So basically at the best case scenario, we're flat at the worst case scenario, we're still tanking. And I guess best case is tanking if you're holding puts. But all I see is weakness. Aside from the last, the first hour of the pre-market, all I see is weakness. So maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I'm just looking at what the market is showing me and going from there. Just my two cents. Four thirty, eleven now four twenty nine ninety nine and falling. All right, let's look here. I'm looking at the October sixth. SPY is going to be four four twenty six. Dang, look at those deltas, crazy. 433, 426, 433. Watch list, SPY, 433 calls, 426 puts. Let's look at SPX. 
Might have to go with a different expiration on the SPX because of volume. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to be going with a September 4th on the SPX just because there's absolutely no volume on this. There's still low volume even on the 4th. But we're going to go. Forty three fifties and forty three hundreds. Those are for the All right, watch list is posted. Oh, you're very welcome, Liz. Glad you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have no questions. Great questions. All right, so we're at this three minute volume node right here, 429.77. There's not a lot of support between here and 422. Very, very weak support. There are some supports there, but they're very weak relative to what the others are. We've spent very little time between 422 and 433. There's very little orders relative to other volume nodes. So we have to be very careful. If we do continue breaking this level and break this 428, and then the pre-market 427.87, it could be Tank City. So far, the volume is high. So far. Yes. All my supports and resistances become from, come from active volume nodes. Now, on the volume profile, you have volume nodes all over the place. But I like to choose some that the price action actually respects. They actually see some manipulation, consolidation in those areas in the past time frame across all time frames. I start at the one year, I go all the way down to the three minute, I look at all the different volume profiles, the ones that are active, the ones that have a lot of manipulation with the price action, I bring in pivots, and I bring in adjustments with other price, and then I bring those out, and I form my supports, and I form my resistances. Resistance. <clears throat> Sometimes there is a significant volume note that the price doesn't really respect, it blows right through it, I don't really consider those. I like to see where the price actually consolidates where we reject, where we bounce, that kind of thing. Most of the time, you can get pretty close. Uh, volume profile, I personally use the VP. So if you go to the indicators and click VP, go down to KV4 coins, I use this one here. Some people like to go into the volume profile, just the database there, the, the I guess the standards, and check choose these. They're both great. Uh, some of those break up this in between buyers and sellers, like green and red, blue and yellow. I personally just like this use when it's no big deal to me. Even even Anna Colling says it's not necessarily important to know how much of that is buyers and how much is sellers. You want to know the overall volume. So that's why I just use the regular gray volume profile. <clears throat> Nigel coming out with a 12% scalp put at the open. Nicely done. It's been an absolutely fantastic week. Uh, it's continuing on, uh, just blasting through the August weakness, coming out with a very strong September. Hopefully, I can rage that into October and uh, have a great, great month. We can have a great month. Yesterday, I mean, it's becoming more and more <clears throat> common. Like, yesterday was a fantastic day, not because of my two plays, but because, like, all the people in the room are starting to get it. It's starting to click. I'm starting to see people posting, like, 10 for 11 play, 10 for 11, 9 for, you know, 9 for 10. 100% win rate on a day after posting 10 plays. Like, it's awesome stuff. Y'all are starting to get what I've been trying to tell you. You're picking up what I'm putting down. <clears throat> more and more people having more and more good days. That, and that's that's what makes this amazing. So, I don't like I don't even get that much fun out of me posting my wins anymore because I just love seeing you all post your wins. 
But you're doing great. Oh, well, exiting, high tier master. Exiting is the hardest part of the game. At least in my, for me, I can like, entering is easy. Exiting is the hardest part. Knowing when to take an exit, knowing when to take the win off the table, and knowing when to take the loss off the table, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you see any do you see any uh, value in having the volume bars themselves split red green? Not necessarily. No. All right, red candles. So we've come off 431.61 and now 430, 429.22 and coming on down. Nice, dirty, dusty. <clears throat> you, me, you, me both will be. Let me, me both. All right, so tech is coming down. SPY is coming down. Everything's coming down. VIX is still popping up back up to over 23 after coming up there to 24 and climbing the bonds are climbing as well. XLF is flat. Wait, watch for XLF to get smoked. XLY is coming down. V is getting absolutely destroyed. XLK is doing the same. If XLF follows suit and comes down, especially with the uptick in bonds, we could see a disastrous turn downward, which actually could be amazing if you're holding puts. Right now, my bet is on puts. I've been waiting for that. We've got uh, data should be coming out here momentarily. Anna Colling's books is amazing, Christian. Absolutely. So I'm glad you're reading it. Let's see here. Let's see here. No data yet. No data yet. Read an interesting article yesterday about what happens if we default on our debt. What happens when the United States government defaults on the what? The, you know, the $800 trillion in debt that we're in. We go to like a D, a D rating. Yeah, I mean, the world economy will collapse. We go from an A D rating to a D rating. Uh, China, China's economy will collapse. Our economy will collapse. It'll make the 29, it'll make the 29 depression look like <clears throat> picnic with bonbons on ice cream. Red candles here, 429.08 coming off of 431.62. After all this green, we're having all this red. Should have kept my puts. I usually don't like to hold my futures plays into the market open though, so I can't really do that because I never do that. <clears throat> I've just always liked trading the futures contract, the futures options. Something I've always done. So PMI is basically very relatively flat. Four twenty nine forty five on the spy. The bonds are red. Looking around here, there's that. I'm going to switch to the five-minute chart to kind of get some trend here. Increase in green buying action here. XLF, ooh, XLF rounded over here. <clears throat> y is rounded over. V, small green candle. XLK doing the same. A lot of weakness here. There's a lot of weakness. <clears throat> like I said, the best... The best data right now is coming out flat, and the worst is actually rounding over to the dot to the bottom. So,
Nice little beak. 38% gain. Nicely done. Well, nice, Chris. <clears throat> it's the best way to do it. Just watch and learn. Watch and learn. Ethan says he just posted his first green month on day trade since I started from learning in this group. 70% win rate. Nicely done, Ethan. Awesome stuff. I'm telling you, you keep learning. You keep grinding away. You actually learn from your that the, from paying that all that market tuition, you can be profitable. You can make money off of this. So well done, awesome stuff, Ethan. I love seeing all the wins. So green candle sold off. Red candles right after it. I'll look for the day. I'll let you know here in a few minutes. Right now, uh, I st everything that I'm looking at says downward. But uh, you know how these things go. We can easily shoot up over shoot up over 435 as we could dropping down to 422. But my gut feeling is downside. I still think we go down just based on everything I'm seeing here. <clears throat> But I will play what I see. I will play what I see. The VIX right now is 22.97. It looks like it wants to cross up and climb. We still have this pivot. Look, the VIX ever since yesterday morning has been on the steady up climb. We still we have these little sell-offs here, but it always makes up ground and climbs. We're still trending upwards here. Overall, even long term, the VIX has been climbing since September 24th. It just won't give up any ground. Up and up and up and up. The bonds themselves. Let's look at the bonds. The bonds bottomed out back here after that little shoot back up after the bounce. We've been trending up slightly, trading flat. Most of the, it's mostly flat, but slightly upward trajectory. Uh, right now, XLF here been down, and we've got this base down here at thirty-seven. So we'll see what happens. Four twenty-nine twenty-four after bouncing off four twenty-seven eighty-seven. My account is up 120% today, but I'm working with small an account. Nicely done. Keep it up. Nice. Just got back from Lowe's. I love Lowe's. Hopefully, we can find Lowe's today. What's up, Options Noob? What's keeping me out of a put right now <clears throat> is I want to see a flush. I want to see a big flush on. Like yesterday, for example, if you're watching the YouTube, I took a put on the flush of the data. You see this increasing? I saw the pop-up in, in, in selling volume. I see these big engulfing candles. I took the put. And all I'm doing after I took this, I didn't even care about this crap. I'm watching this. I see bam, bam, bam. And this is the five-minute chart too. So let's look at the three-minute. I saw increasing data. And that's what I took that put. I rode that put all the way down, 46% uh, win. And I'm watching volume, so if I, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see this wicks here. I want to see full-bodied candles like this. Full-bodied candles, nice, big, healthy candles uh, come all the way down. So if I see that under volume, I'll enter a put, and I'll ride it back down. So how do you catch the flushes so well? You got to watch the volume. Like when I see a red, when I see this form, I'm like, okay. Here's a big red candle. What's going to happen? Or am I going to get a am I going to get a wick, or is it going to have a follow on candle? No wick. Well, I mean that's no wick. So I see this follow on candle. I start to open lower. I see the uptick in volume here. So we jump into position here. And then after that, I'm watching. Could I be wrong? Sure, I could be wrong. But I like to have these big beautiful candles. Come on down, big full body can. I hate wicks. No wicks. Wicks show weakness because that tells me what what is what actually is a wick. It's something that you like. Never mind. I'm not going to do another dad joke. Never mind. I've already done like three dad jokes today. So you have these full, full bodied candles, red down. When the buyers come in and buy this up, you've got this candle will come up and it'll form a wick. 
And that shows me that the buyers are still there. So what I want to see is an abundance of sellers in the form of full bodied candles. Bam, bam, bam. This kind of scared me. I was still holding here. This scared me, but I still held the position. I saw that the candle got sold back off and we went on down and then I closed the position right here. I still could have held it for even more of a win, but I closed it here before market closed. And uh, it was it was just a great, great day. So uh, I'm always trying to look for volume. Right now we're at 429.40, a lot of wicks, not really flushing, so. Uh, D, that is your are your internet settings or your YouTube settings. I've got it set to max resolution now, so you've got to you got to adjust your settings. At what point would I buy longer dated calls? In order for me to even consider taking longer dated calls, I need progress on this chart right here. This is the chart that matters to me when thinking about longer dated calls, and this is the one year chart. This is the one year chart here. Everything I'm looking at looks terrible for calls. You've got long, big candles. If you're buying a call right now, you are buying a call because of hope. That's it. There is zero, zero technical data to tell us we're going higher. If we do go higher, then you're buying prematurely. You're not waiting for confirmation. Here, everything tells me from a volume, from a technical standpoint, from a volume standpoint, from a market standpoint, that we're going down. So until I see recovery here, I'm not even thinking about swing calls. Uh oh, Lil B took a call. Uh, can I talk about the 92% win yesterday? Yes, I can. It was a very small position. <clears throat> I didn't even get all that excited about it. It was over here. It looked dumpy to me. Uh, I had to step away from the computer to make lunch for the kids and all that stuff. And so I took a put. I set a stop on it, walked away from it. I figured, you know, there's a good chance that things are going to stop out by the time I get back. I came back and we were down here. Uh, so that was pretty nice. <clears throat> Sold the position and that was it. But I saw this price action start to break down here. Uh, took the position there. I saw it break off the 34 to the downside. I saw, I saw a slight uptick in, in selling volume there. It was still relatively low volume, but the way these things were wicking out, wick, 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 I didn't see a lot of strength. I see this green candle get sold off when I entered the position. Slight uptick in selling volume there. And it just, it was one of those positions that worked out. It worked out. It was a very small position. So, is what it is. <clears throat> Nice, dirty, dusty. Oh, Night Frog. I was holding 438 puts from October 8th last Friday. Nicely done. Nicely done. <clears throat> Oh, nice, Ethan. Glad you got that figured out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a great play. Don't get me wrong. The, the winning percentage looks fantastic. It was just a smaller play. You know, it was, you know. I didn't get too excited about it because it, was, it wasn't live called. So it's like, Y'all can't benefit from that, so I don't get excited about it. Four twenty nine thirty five. We're still shaking and baking here at four twenty nine twenty two and thirty one. Uh, the Q is still rolling over. Tech's still looking, little, looking very heavy. The VIX is still holding twenty two eighty eight. The bonds are off here at the bottom. <clears throat> tech man, tech is looking heavy. May want to take a put. Qs are coming down. SPY is coming down as well. We've got six minutes until the morning range is set. We're at four thirty-one sixty-one to four twenty-eight eighty-one. That's just shy of three dollars. Three dollars. 
That's a big old range. We've been lately, that's where we're getting accustomed to. Some big old morning range. My wife says, Good morning, class. <laughs> What's up, Mrs. Crushinator? Tech is popping. Does that mean, oh, pooping? Okay, I was about to say. Because I see tech crashing. Another wick. Man, green candles sold off red. A lot of vol little volatility is coming in here. These candles are shaking and baking. Man, I think we're on the verge of a dump. Uh, let's see. I know there's a lot of questions coming across here. Give a second. I want to watch this. This candle's shaking and baking here. I don't want to miss a play because I'm bumping my gums. Man, look at that. That thing just jumped up green. Tech is still down, though. Spy jumped green. Let's look at the NASDAQ here. Oh, what was that? The bonds. Look at the bonds, dude. The bonds just sold off big time. Massive red candle on the bonds here. The rates are climbing up hard. I think we might see some green action. Wow. All right, the VIX just popped down to 2264 right now. The biggest thing for me, though, is this bond. This bond activity just rolled over big time. Rates are popping up 1.505 after bouncing off 1.47. Big green action here on SPY. Uh, the VIX is rolling over as well. Tech is still down. It's not falling along. If tech follows suit, it may rage. Uh, so careful here. Apple appears to be forming some sort of consolidation phase. Big green candles on SPY right now. The Qs are trying to conform a consolidation. Interesting, interesting action. Just because of that bond movement, I'm going to flip over to calls just for the time being. Big old buying volume coming up here. And tech is starting to follow suit. And SPY just bounced off 428.76 to 430.34. Crazy, crazy action. Uh, let's see. Higher rates equals a bearish market, though, right? Well, you have to think about the bigger picture. Like, what, what, do, who does, what does this benefit? TNX. What does this benefit? Does it benefit me and you, or does this benefit big money? That benefits big money. Big money sees this. They rotate out of bonds into the market because they're getting a better return. So they come into the market, and you see this pop up here. Uh, you see the sell off of the bonds because they're rotating out. You see this on the XLF because this. What is XLF? What is what is the meat and potatoes of XLF? <clears throat> banks. What happens to banks when the rates go up? They make more money. So they climb back up. That's why you see the rotation out of bonds. That's why you see the spike in TNX. That's why you see a spike in XLF. <clears throat> Remember that next time you want to take out another mortgage. <laughs> the banks get your money. It's funny. I'm a big real estate dude. <clears throat> like, I love real estate. I think real estate is the number one proponent for financial independence and for accumulating massive wealth by the time you're in your elder years. Uh, however, I think your personal residence is the worst investment you could possibly make. The people that think that, uh, you know, their personal residence is an asset is not. It's not an asset. Yes, we went on a crazy appreciation phase of your personal residence, like, what, 200, 300% in the past three years? Sure. But over the course of 30 years, it's a massive, massive liability, not an asset. 
especially if you're on a 30 year mortgage. Especially on a 30 year mortgage. You pay, if you pay a 30 year mortgage over the course of his, of his lifespan, you're more than doubling your, your, the price of the home. You're, you're paying over double of what the market value of the home is. That's why it's so important to hedge that loss with rentals, investment real estate. Investment real estate is the number, number one investment vehicle. And don't take my word for it. Do the math. Do an, do an amortization schedule on your mortgage for 30 years. With real estate, it's only an asset. If it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that my statement does change if you pay cash for your personal residence. If you're uh, my my thesis is on if you're taking a mortgage out, a thirty year mortgage on your property, and you pay it for the thirty years, yes, that's the that that is the bad vest. But if you pay cash, that's different because then it's just another investment vehicle. You're now you're holding on to appreciation. Granted, you're missing out on the revenue of renting it out and you're living in it, but still. All right, Big Green Candle completely got sold and actually queues are forming new lows. VIX is popping back up here and that to me is a bearish activity when you've got that much buying volume and that's just blown out blown away. This tells me the sellers are still here to stay. We'll see what happens with these follow-on candles. But look at this massive buying volume candle. Massive buying volume brought this candle up, blew it back down almost to where it was. What do you think about buying a duplex first and renting out half while living the other? That's a fantastic way to do it. If you've got the capital to do that, well, absolutely. Fantastic way. So build a bunch of tiny houses in Airbnb. There you go. There you go. Buy you buy you a corner property on a peninsula on a lake and put up a little cabin house and rent it for BNB. That's one way. Airbnb is my next forte. That's what I want to break into next. It's Airbnbs. Anyway, shaking and baking here. Green, red, green. No positions yet. Uh, the Qs are down here at this 356. SPY is 429 after popping up to 43032. And we're right now here. Uh, the morning ranges are set, by the way. 43161, 42881. <clears throat> Debt limit brinksmanship could put pressure on the US being a AAA rating. Yeah, it could. Here's a question to ask yourself. Is owning better than renting? Depends who you ask. I still think, yes, owning is better than renting. It's just one of those, you know, obviously the vast majority of people cannot afford to buy a home without using a mortgage. So it's like 99% of people. So yes, obviously it's one of those necessary evils that we have to take apart, be a part in. But uh, it's just one of the things you have to really work to offset that loss over the course of 30, especially if you plan on paying off your home in 30 years and not, not sooner. You really have to work on hedging that loss because you're taking a astronomical loss over the course of 30 years. All right. Green candles climbing, eating this thing back up. So a little volatility here in the early morning hours, big sell off. And now we're popping back up and shaking and baking. Tiny homes. What's up, Night Frog? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Tiny homes. What about apartments? If you can afford an apartment complex, I know it's, I know a couple of dudes here that have invested in an apartment complex. And I don't mean like giant, like 800 family apartment complex, but you buy a small pot of land, you put two or three building apartment complex on there. I mean, I know a couple of guys. It's, it's a way to do it. 
Made my living from Airbnb. Nice, Christian. What's up, Kaysway? Haven't seen you in a while. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, nice, Spicy Curry. Well done. All right. So four twenty nine seventy five. Cody's going with the 4,200 puts. I love it. The October 8th little... Oh, sorry. I just call that his play. My bad. <laughs> yep, so Cody posts his plays in the Super Patreoners room for his Tier 2. For the part, part of being the peer, Tier 2 Patreoner, you get all my plays as well as Cody's plays, and he's normally a Theta player. Uh, most of the time, me and him are exactly on the same page. That's why I chose to bring him on. Because uh, we are on the same white wavelength. Look at volume. We both very similar traders. So yeah. All right, red candles selling off the green. Take a look around here. The bonds are there. The VIX. All right, so a big green candle on the cues. VIX is falling over here, 2235. We've got to bounce here soon. Uh, let's see what happens right now. We're right at the 21 EMA on the three minute chart for SPY. The cues coming back up, follow on green candle. A lot of shaking and baking here. XLF is rounding over. Pretty big red candles here on XLF. Yeah, Brent, uh, right now going tier two, it, uh, in, it's like Patreon's doing its processing because it's new month. So it's, it takes like a day or two. It's weird. So let me know what happens and uh, we'll work through it. I don't know. I'm still leaning towards a dump. I'm still leaning rocket. You know, I'm still like everything here. All this, the, all the strength is being sold. I don't see a lot of crazy bullish action here. That will, that could change in the next five, 10 minutes. But uh, especially with the bonds coming back up here, the rates are selling back off. I still think we're coming down and we'll see how it plays out, you know? Just y'all be careful. If you're going to play this action, just please be careful. How do you get into tier two? I will post the link for you all. There you go. Just click on that. Head over to tier two. If you are, if you all already a tier one, it'll just uh, it'll it'll make up the difference if you go to the tier two. So I won't charge you the full tier two. It'll just charge the difference. Look at all these dojis, dude. These candle, these wicks. Right here, the Qs are still climbing up. The VIX is falling over to twenty two thirty six here. Uh, you do need a margin account there, but you can still trade that. Uh, you just, the, the thing with Theta, 
it sounds sexy. Like it, it's it's a very good strategy to have, but it's not like you want to play. You, you want to be able to hold long positions and play short positions in theta as well. Learn how to play both, and, and theta is just another tool you need to learn how to use. Like it sounds sexy, but I guarantee you, if you go down to the theta room and look, a lot of those dudes are probably at least neutral, if not in a loss for the month. So just be very careful in playing theta. You have to know how to manage your downside. You have to know how to roll positions to close positions and know what to do when things go against you. It's not, it's a little more complicated than normal long positions and you can destroy. You want to talk about losses? If you don't know how to manage theta positions, you can destroy your account in seconds in moments. So just please be very careful. By the way, look at these red candles, baby. That's like, that's what I like to call flush city. <laughs> Big red candles. Let's go. Look at the bottom. Just smoke the bottom out. Just smoke the bottom out. Get some. This is what I... All right, hold on a second here. Hold on a second here. Hey, quit falling. Quit it. <laughs> quit it. What a beautiful, beautiful candle. All right, so <clears throat> that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about right there. Is everything look weak? I see a lot of green, but I see a lot of weakness. You got to look through the price action. That's why it's so important to trade volume. All right, so let's look at Qs here. Let's look at XLF. XLF just hosed over. Bonds just bought back up. The rates are still there, red right there, flat. And we just had a big sell-off there. I am thinking about jumping in. My finger is right on the puts here, uh, ready to go. I see this candle shaking and baking. I'm making sure it's not going to get bought up here. I want to make sure that uh, volume is supportive. It's not going to wick up. And we'll look at jumping in a play here. Big red candle under supported volume. This thing looks like it wants to roll. Dang it. All right. I just tried to limit buy in the order there. It thought it filled. It did not fill. And here we go flushing. Little B's in a put. Nice. I think it can drop more. I think it can drop more. Uh, so it's crazy, crazy stuff. So here we go. <clears throat> Here's the synopsis. We closed, we, op we opened gap down 427.87. We climbed up to 431. We hovered here, we dropped, we consolidated, and we just flushed the bottom out. So things are looking buried. We had this massive, massive buying volume destroyed. We had this follow-on candle down, and here we go, down we go. And we're still falling. Tried to get filled at $8.70. Couldn't get filled. I'm looking at the 4230s on the October 4th for SPX. And uh, now they're sitting at 940, out with a 17.5% win. 
Yeah, I got 427.27, I believe, is, is the first support below here. Uh, 87 is where we gap down. Out with a 5% are nicely done. I told you all. I've been telling you. Ain't I told you? I've been telling you for 10 dang years. Red candle right out the bottom. It was all my ready puts. Not yet. I tried to get in some. I missed the limit. I'm about to get back in. Anyway, I, 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 no one caught my movie reference, by the way. So, 428.06. What's up, Jordan? How you doing? Now, if no one caught it, I'm not going to repeat it. Sorry, that means it wasn't a good movie reference. I think it's possible we could say 423 today. I'm still, I said it yesterday. I'm still, oh, oh, there you got it. Ep epidemic got it. Epidemic got it. Two, two points for epidemic. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I said yesterday we're hitting 423. I still think we're going down. I still think we're hitting 423. VIX is 2309. My heart is pumping right now. <laughs> feel that. Get it. Makes you feel alive. Makes you feel alive. <clears throat> I'm going to adjust my watch list here. I'm not going to take my eyes off of it just yet, though, because I don't want to miss any action. This thing is shaking the bacon. I want to dig into the watch list here and start freaking missing a giant candle. So my finger is on the buy button. This was my best day of the year. Dude, you're killing it. Killing it. I hope y'all are jumping in the Patreoners, man. It's what a what a great room. Y'all are killing it. Absolutely killing it. I've been telling y'all all day and yesterday that this is weak. This is weak. And here we go, baby. Here we go. Let's make some money together. Let's live together. 427.87. Three big candles coming up. 429 and falling. <clears throat> Neil's out with 15%. Well done. Cody coming in with his bullish juju. <laughs> Bonds haven't moved all that much with this little dip. Uh, the futures are dipping down. There we go. Spy is coming down. <clears throat> Prima see pretty expensive today. Let's see. Implied volatility is, tw yeah, I mean, they're still in 20%. They're still over 20%. So we'll see. Options new. We got in at 230s out of $3. Nicely done. You're killing it. Killing it. Killing it. Watching here, we got increased volume here. Uh, the this candle is lower than the last one, but still drilling. <clears throat> the VIX spiked to twenty three thirty four and climbing, and the bonds are red, green and climbing. XLF just fell through the bottom, and Nasdaq is big red candles here. SPY is big red candles and falling, and falling. Look at those two big red candles. So I missed two freaking limit orders. I'm sitting here watching the two open orders. And uh, we're at 427.28 at 1140. 
on the October 4th, 4230s. Let me look down here. <clears throat> Green candles. There is not much between here and 423. There's not much. If we hit 420, I'm closing my entire swing position. I would hope so. I would I would hope so. What kind of candle is your favorite, red or green? It depends if I'm holding calls or puts. Four twenty seven thirty two. Green candles getting smoked. VIX is still twenty three forty two and rising. That was such a cheeky answer. <laughs> I'm a cheeky guy. I don't know what cheeky means, but hey. October fourth, forty two thirty. Hey, Brent got ten percent. Y'all are killing it. A hundred and nine percent for Wolfenstein. Well done. My 4.30 calls from last night are up over 50% today. Or puts, I'm sorry. Nice, nice. Don't worry, Hayden. I missed I missed two fills today as well. So, Dan got his first big win today. Well done. So now we're just watching, see if we get a little LRS here. VIX is a little red popping off the top. I want to look around the underlines. The underlines is going to be the note of a bounce. XLV found support. XLK is down way below support. And a SPY is up here. Double green on the, on the Qs. VIX is there. TLT is still flat with the red candle coming down. NASDAQ is there. SPY is there. Hey, hey. Watch the language. What is something you guys are working with? What do you mean? What do you mean? 54% gain. Nice plays. Awesome stuff. 230% on A traders. Looking, looking awesome. Good, good stuff. Y'all killing it. Trade like a robot and y'all killing it. Love it. Still think we're going down. I still think we are going down. You heard it here first on Options of Millionaire, people. You heard it here first. Let's go to the one year. I'm just kidding. I'm not that conceited. All right. So low right now is 427.25. We pop lows, increase selling volume. Let's bring it down to 423. Hey, let's bring it down to 418. Let's bring it down to 418. Come on. Your bags are packed. Your tickets are ready. It's time to go home. Let's send them home. All in the hips. Another movie reference. Y'all are killing it on them getting the movie references. I love it. I love it. What's making you guys the money? We're playing spy. We're playing the Qs. We're playing SPX. We're playing the ETFs, baby. That's how we're making money. We focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's PES PY. We're at the ETFs. And we do pretty dang good at it. Everyone else is getting killed by this downside. We're not getting killed. There's more wins in this room than there has been in the past few months. I love it. Largest win so far, nice silver bluff. Watch the 8 EMA failure. Embrace the puts. That's right. Right, the snake. Retirement portfolio is getting killed. Yeah, you got to hedge the retirement portfolio. 
If you have a possibility to hedge, uh, to reduce risk, do it. The time's coming. G fund, baby. If you're in the TSP, you be better be mirroring that G fund. All right, Q's just sold back off the little red candle. Flip, they're just uh, selling off the green. The bonds are up as well. SPY is up here. Just flipped red. XLF, watching XLF closely. Watching XLF closely. The VIX is maintaining 23, baby. All right, I took one at 960. I'm in at 960 here on the put. Uh, let's see how this thing rolls. I've got my finger on the sell trigger. We have a little consolidation here. <clears throat> Want to see if that thing can fall on down? Right there. Third misentry of the day. Which is, you know, it's cool. A lot of stuff shaking the bacon, so you got to be careful there. <clears throat> There's 1020. There's a green candle sold off. Come on. I'm playing that LRS. There it is. There it is. I haven't posted this in the room yet because I don't want to take my finger off the trigger. But just be careful. Be careful. There's the flush. Come on. Come on down. Vic's popping up again. That VIX is climbing. Look, look at XLF. XLF was down as well. Big red candles there. All right, I took half at 1060. I'm not posting these in the play yet because, uh, yeah, I don't want to take my finger off of this. This thing's shaking. I'm trying to scalp some bottoms before we get to before I get out the bottom. All right, I'm out half at 1060 there. Ten sixty is the price. Green candles getting smoke left and right. I'd love to see it. Let's see if we can get this thing to flush. A risky play? No. I mean, I saw, I was watching the wicks. I saw this LRS here. I saw the wicks. I saw that volume was still holding. And now I'm watching the green candles get destroyed. I still think we're falling lower, but I still wanted to take that dollar profit off. So, and we'll see what happens here. The buyers are getting hosed here and more green candles getting sold. I need this thing to come on down, baby. All right, tech flipped red and falling. This candle's flipping red and falling. Let's go, son. Come on. Come on. Pack your bag. Let's go home. All right, mother, another green candle. The buyers just don't want to the buyers don't want to take it up here. The buyers don't want to take it up. So you got you gotta be careful here. If you're in a call, you gotta be careful. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Look at all these top wicks. Look at all these top wicks. You have to look at the volume and what's going on. Look at the top wicks. The buyers just keep getting smoked. Increasing selling volume. A lot of top wicks. All the green all the green candles are getting topped. We could go up here, but uh, that's why I'm holding the left half of my position. How bad of, how bad of an idea is zero DTEs? Uh, yeah, you just if you're playing zero DTEs, you gotta be. I mean, you just gotta be right. So if you're right, I mean they're great. But if you're wrong, they're extremely bad. So.
I'm looking at the... Oh, I'm going to post these here. Right there. That's the ones I'm looking at. All right, so 427.79. Top wicks. This thing doesn't want to hold. Look at that. Another green candle as we got to get top wicked here. Uh, the queues are still there. The sellers are still here. We're below the ADMA, and I'm still holding this baby. So come on. No buying volume. Flush it. VIX is still in the uptrend. Let's look at XLF. XLF is starting to bounce just a touch. That may lead me to exit this position quickly. Yep, I exited that one there at 970. So I'm out of that position. This is what started giving me the let that started to take that off is this XLF right there. And that's what I'm like. So, all righty. Start the day off with a little win. I like it. I like it. So I'll be looking to enter back in here in the event that this thing does downturn here. But this here is what led me to start to get out of that position. I saw this big green coming out here and I was ready. So blush it. Let's do it. I'm the Bob Ross of day trading. I'll take that. I'll take that. And look at that big green candle right after I exit. That's what I want to see. Follow on red. And I'm going to post this here. Uh, let's see. Call live and voice screen. And this is uh, SPX 10-4. All right. Hey, that another green candle just got wicked down there. XLF coming down. I'm telling you, man, this market looks so heavy. All right, I just got the question. Uh, why are we regularly pulling for the market to tank? Is it because there's more money to be made on the downside? Uh, do you feel the market has been overextended, propped up? All right, so I'm not... It's a good question. I love I love getting this question here. So it's it's not like that I'm rooting for the market to tank. It's just I am looking at the what, what the market has given me. If the market looks incredibly bullish, then let's rock it to 460. If the market's looking incredibly bearish, let's take it down to 420 or 410. So I just want the path of least resistance. That's what I want to play. The path of least resistance. If the path of least, least resistance is down to 410, then I'm going to play puts into the ground. I will, I will, I will cheer four foot red candles all the way into the ground. Let's do it. And the other side as well. If I see buyers come in here, if I see, you know, the economy starting to do great things and Hey, let's play it to 460. So. I like to play what the market gives me, what the chart gives me, because that's the smartest move. It takes away all your emotions. Like you have to trade like a robot, trade like a robot. If I could remove my brain and put in like a CPU, that's like with all my systems and all of my knowledge about how to do this, then I'd do it. If I could just remove all emotion, just trade what the market gives me. Beep, beep, boop, boop. That's right. Zero one 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 zero one one zero. Uh, I'm posting the in the Patreoners OM plays Harsha. Uh, can I make a video about other factors, conditions, and other ETS mixed buy moves? Yeah, I can do that. Market like a market awareness video, sure.
All right, so we've got this little upward wedge thingy going on here. We're right below the 8 EMA on the three-minute chart. We've got some red-greens flipping back and forth. I would love to jump back into a put here. NASDAQ is flat underneath the POS, or I'm sorry, the volume node. Features are there as well. The rates are still falling off here. And bonds are still climbing. I still think we're going down. And there it is. There's a red candle. I still think we're going down here. And I may enter another position. There it is. Another red. I'm close to entering another put just because the way I see here. I see the, the bonds are starting to spike. XLF is rounding over. I see the rates start coming back down here. And SPY has got another engulfing red candles here. And uh, didn't quite get the LRS. We were just above there. Now, people ask, what is the LRS? Just a fun term we use. We made it up. It stands for Lee Rat Special, who's one of our members in the Discord. Uh, so he's been doing he's been doing wondrous things, uh, playing the bounce, the rejection of the 8 EMA. So when I see the rejection of the 8, we call it affectionately the LRS. It's not a technical term. If you Google it, you won't find anything except maybe some sort of thing that stands for LRS that's not affiliated with us. All right, so big wick right there. So careful if you are holding puts, that is not a good sign. So we might just be in a little consolidation phase. Either way, uh, I don't like the looks of that. Oh, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate that. You know that uh, if I can help a few of these people, a few people, and, and you as well, and anybody else, if I can help anyone learn how to do this a little bit more effectively, and obviously, nothing I post is gonna is gonna make you entirely profitable overnight. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It just there's not that thing. Nobody in this world can post anything or any kind of give you any kind of tidbit that's gonna make you profitable overnight. But if I can start to move that needle to loss heavy to profit heavy and just start moving it closer and closer, I've done my job. I feel I've filled my duty of trying to give you as much information as possibly can in the shortest amount of time possible. Yep. It's a, it's absolutely a marathon. It's absolutely a marathon. And you may start out on a nine hour marathon pace, but eventually I want you to start running at a three hour marathon pace and a two hour marathon pace. It just slowly speed up, slowly speed up. Increased buying volume here got wicked out. I can feel this pride movement is getting me emotional. I'm up 4% today. Got to go hunting cash shell. Hey, nice. What are, you, what are you hunting for, Lester? What are you going? I assume deer. Isn't it, uh, isn't it bow season right now? 427.93. Take what the market gives us. That's right. That's right. We have no hate. That's right. No hate. We don't do bears. We don't do bulls. Nice, Lester. Have fun with that. Hope you, hope you get something. Look at that. Look at that red candle.
All right, red candles all the way down. Good. So we sold off the green. That's what I'm looking for. We sold off the green. This volume node here, that's that's uh, consolidation, Brent. That's consolidation. So the more volume, the more we hang out right here, the bigger this volume node is going to get. If we hang out here all morning long, this volume node will start getting larger and larger and larger and larger. Justin's in an LRS. Here we go. Breaking lower. Breaking lower. <clears throat> Out at 17%, nicely done. <clears throat> All right, let's look around here. Bonds are starting to spike. XLF is going lower. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Here we go. You know what? I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Let's see here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to put my I'm going to put my typing where my mouth is. Rona, there you go. That's right. All right, I am voting yes. Vic spike twenty three fifty one. Spy is holding this four twenty seven twenty six. We're already at pre market lows. We're below the session ranges. The, vol the selling volume has increased. Everything says we're going down. Will we rebound? Maybe. Will we fly up to 435? Maybe. But I think we're going down. However, I'm not playing that until I see confirmation. Y'all know me. It's okay to have a bias. Just don't play into that bias. You have to be mature enough not to play into your bias. Don't be egotistical enough where you're like, oh, well, I think it's going down, so I'm going to slam the puts. Yeah, no. Nah. Play the chart. Uh, Lester says, "Are you trading October one? No, I'm not. I'm trading. Uh, I'm trading October fourth on uh, the SPX and October sixth on the SPYs. What do you think about trading a strangle? A straddle seems cheap enough on the current expiration to make both sides as plus if moves at all. What do you think? Uh, it's a great play. Uh, if I'm doing something like that, I'm going to be selling strangles, which right now I'm not. I think we're going to blow one side out of the other, so I'm not going to do any of that. But IV is high though. Yeah." Because we had such a large move yesterday, doesn't that make another large feel difficult today? New. So you have to look in the case of momentum in sellers. Sellers are picking up here. Uh, the way things are acting, we're flushing out the buyers. Very well, we could drop. So right now we're in a consolidation phase at this 428. And the reason why I'm, I'm so focused on that 423 is because there's not a lot of support between here and there. If we do pop low, we can 423 will be will be approached quickly, quickly. So, I mean, it's only right here. I mean, it's only it's only right here. It's not that far down. Boom. That's right, Justin. There's nothing bullish about that picture. Nothing.
<clears throat> Can't trade on a small account anymore, but made 30% gains. Nicely done. Awesome stuff, Kira. Great stuff. Great stuff. Well done. Keep the learning going. I love it. All right. Look at the big bounce on Q's. Little red here on on the bonds. VIX is there. No volume. Yeah, I think I accidentally muted everybody. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know how I did that because usually I hear some people talking. I'll see if I can open it back up. I don't mind a little talking. Uh, it's never gotten out of hand, so let's see what I can do. Yeah, I don't have anybody muted for some reason. I can't hear anything. So, I don't know. Uh, I struggle with pick and strike prices. Any tips to share? Yes, Mason. Uh, absolutely. So, for me, I, I try to be as analytical as possible. I don't want to just blindly pick. Everything I try to do is intentional. Whether it be a little bit intentional or a lot intentional, everything has to have some level of intentionality. So when I'm picking a strike, I look at volume, open interest, and delta. Those are the three main things I'm looking at picking a strike. My deltas for SPY are always between, I would say always, mo most of the time I try to stay in, but nothing's absolute. You know, my, my a good system is living, breathing, and, and dynamic. But most of the time I try to keep it between 0.35 and 0 0.4, 0 0.41 on the deltas. So that's what I'm always trying to do. That narrows me down to a good premium, which I'm usually comfortable with when I felt when implied volatility is playing ball with this. <clears throat> and then open interest. If so, if I do see a strike that falls between my delta parameters, but the volume is extremely low, like if I go to SPX and I'm trying to trade SPX, those are outside the money, by the way. I never trade inside the money. If I'm looking at SPX, for example, and those are my deltas, and they are like 10 volume or five volume, five on the volume, way too low. I don't want to trade that. I mean, if I'm trading 20 to 30 contracts on SPX and I see very low volume, I'm going to have some liquidity issues. I'm going to, I'm going to spread is going to be a little wider. So yeah, um, that's the issue with that. So I'm always trying to be dynamic and I always try to find something that matches three criteria, criteria, open interest, volume, and delta. If I see high open interest and then decent volume and they fall within a good delta, then I'll take that. That's how I shoot my strike. Uh, yeah, I always do. But uh, that that play in particular, I was live, I was calling it live on the voice stream because things were so volatile. I didn't want to take the time to go in and post in the OM plays. Things were crazy volatile. So I was live calling it on the voice stream. But yeah, I always do mention everyone whenever I can. <clears throat> uh Vix is twenty three ten. We are at, we are at what looks like a pivotal point here. Do we continue to climb higher or reject and go lower? The volume tells me there's no mu there's not much buyers here. Someone said Microsoft's going crazy. Yeah, they're back up to their morning top. Apple's getting destroyed though. Amazon's destroyed. Facebook is still struggling with this little level. 
NVIDIA is getting roasted. So a lot of tech is down. Due to the leverage for the pre-market low, high, low price, do you leverage pre-market high, low prices? Uh, if you mean, do I follow them? Yeah, yeah. Right now, like the pre-market low and a high, I follow them in, in terms of I, it's, I like to form the supports. If you break, like for, the, for this example, we broke pre-market lows, which is 427.87, that's where we opened. That's bearish. We broke the prior consolidation low, which is very bearish. So every time we break those lows, that's just telling me the buyer, the sellers are going to bring this lower and lower. That's why I like to take in all the data. I like to take in pre-market data, and I like to take in the actual market data as well. And you have to look at the whole picture. The more data you bring in, the less bias creeps in. The less, da the less data you look at, the more you can start to creep in your bias. This, if you were to just look at just this, starts to look a little bullish. But you got to look at the whole picture. <clears throat> a little bit of rounding up here a little green up on the 34 ema the q's are right at the 34 as well the vix big red candle on the vix crazy You got to look at the underlyings. You got to look at the underlyings here. So the rates are still staying down. I'm seeing across the board a little bit of bullish action here on all the X's. SPY's at 34, 42896. Big green candles, right up to the volume node. Hedge fund lost 32%. Can you imagine investing in a hedge fund and you lose 32% of your money? Ridiculous. I don't need a hedge fund to do that. <laughs> That's funny. Y'all are crazy. All right. So we chugged up above 34. Let's go to the five. Let's see how the five minute is looking. Green candles in the five minute. We're right at the 34 EMA on the five minute chart. The buying volume is not all that is not all that prosperous here. We're right down here. Got this volume candle. 91,000 here on this volume candle. You got 165,000 on this candle. Diminishing volume, big price action. I'm more inclined to take a put here than I am a call. But let's see how things work. You invested in Bernie. Ah, yikes. Yeah, I remember Bernie. He, uh, he made off with a lot of people's profits.
But um, 429.12. So we form new lows. 428.86 is where we bounced on the 20th of September. You see what we've done since then. We come down. Uh, let's look at the action after we bounced here. So look, we had a very bearish morning, just like today. We bounced and we fell back down all the way to 428. So we started at 436. We fell to 428. That was an $8 move in, in the single day. $10 if you're thinking about actually more than that. Uh, 14, $12 if you're talking about the previous day. So you see that big bearish action. We came back up. We entered the 444 region. We fell back down. And here we are hovering out at 429. 433 to 429. Uh, not too bearish, but uh, definitely overall bearish. And let's see if we can come down. Do you put any weight on the 150 SMA as a minor support resistance level? And Forex is considered a minor area. It could explain where we are now. Uh, I don't usually follow the 150. So I would answer, I guess the answer to the question would be no. But not against it. Uh, yeah, are you are you in the voice channel? Can you please put mention for OM plays uh, so we get the push notification? Yep. I do that every time, but this in particular instance, I was calling the play live on the voice stream. I don't know if you're in here or not, but uh, yeah. So I was calling it voice stream because it was too volatile for me to take my hands off and actually go and post it. But yes, I will. 429.57. A lot of green here coming up through the 34. Because of this right here. Hold on, I'll show you. Because of this, I still think the time has come to play some puts shortly. How much do we need to pay you to stream 24/7? Uh you have to you have to fund my divorce. <laughs> Four twenty nine thirty three. Or yeah, or buy my Air Force contract out. Yeah. Robbie says, been following me for a few weeks. Decided to pull the trigger today on Patreon. Thanks. Appreciate that, Robbie. Thanks for supporting the community. Thanks for being here. Appreciate that. Can you actually buy yourself out of a car force contract? I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure there's a precedence for it somewhere. I don't know. I'm not even gonna try to have that conversation though. Not to mention I love what I do. So but yeah. You can buy out of your contract. Interesting. Interesting. If I hated it, I would highly consider it, but I don't. I love what I do. Great stuff. How do you play easy? All right, so ABC, you have to have a futures account. And then if you're searching for it in E-Trade, put a slash in front of it like this. E-S-Z-1. Like that. That's how you have to search for it. You can deny a vaccine and get it on. No, I already got my vaccine, so... <laughs> I'm with you, little B.
Every time I call you Lil B, I think you need to have a teardrop tattoo on the side of your eye. Lil B. So we're right at the 34. We've got diminishing buying volume here. Not much support in terms of the buying. Dirty Dusty's in puts at $1.12. Rocket's preparing for puts. VIX is on a steady increase. The bonds are red here. NASDAQ is green. The rates are still holding steady. I don't want to see a rocket in the rates here. XLF is bouncing back up. I don't want to preemptively enter some puts, but I do like the idea of puts here. If I'm being honest. What do you do that allows you time to day trade? I fly at night. A pilot in Air Force fly at night. Good stuff. Have you ever heard of Auta Pilot? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I like to have a good time. 429.11. We got a little consolidation here. Three candles. We topped that right at the 34. And I'm hovering on the five minute chart. Uh, just so I could see if there's any trend data built in here. Well, it looks like we're rejecting the 34 right now. Q's, top wicks. Do I write sell options? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, I can't say, Christian. I can't say. A good one. I'll say that. All right, so 98, 98 of you says we're not going to hit 423. 46 of you said we will. And three of you have a downward rocket emoji. Uh, fixed wing. Hey, Dave, it's fixed wing. 75 hours in a single prop. Always wanted to fly for the Air Force. We'll do it. It's a absolutely fantastic way to break into the aviation community. Not to mention the military aviation is, is an awesome, awesome career. Awesome career. How do I know is going to reverse? Uh, volume, baby. Volume. You got to read the price action. Got to read the volume. The volume is very telling. Volume is very telling. You want, you know, this whole lesson and the crate, here's what I like to equate the entire 2020, 2021 bull market with. This is what I want to equate it to. Do y'all remember Elmo? Tickle Me Elmo? You couldn't buy a Tickle Me Elmo anywhere. Tickle Me Elmo was like through the freaking roof on price. Like you had... You had middle-aged women beating each other in the middle of Walmart trying to get their hands on a Tickle Me Elmo. Prices were crazy. Supply was through the floor. Demand was through the roof. Why was it? Because it was the hottest item that year. Everybody wanted a Tickle Me Elmo. That is a perfect lesson in supply and demand. There's nothing special about Tickle Me Elmo. You just tickled a red robotic stuffed animal. And it went, hee, 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 and that was it. And it made your kids happy. But there was, you know, you literally, you had middle-aged women beating each other with their purses, trying to get their hands on Tickle Me Elmo because the supply and demand was crazy. So the price skyrocketed. You would go on freaking Craigslist and people were, you know, if that was a thing back then, you know, people were charging like 500 bucks for Tickle Me Elmo because demand was incredibly high. And then the luster of Tickle Me Elmo went away. Prices plummeted. And then all of a sudden, all these supply chains that had bought up millions of Tickle Me Elmos were now holding on to millions of Tickle Me Elmos because nobody else wanted a Tickle Me Elmo. So, and that's exactly what's happening here. So you've got this crazy bullish action here, this big demand. 
because the market was churning. The market was being artificially propped up by monetary policy. We've got this crazy run up to 450. And now demand is crawling over. Demand has fallen over. The buyers have said, this is too high for me. They're stepping out separate sellers are stepping in. You have natural supply and demand. You have natural economic flow and down we go. We have it. We've had a highly extended market from an economic standpoint. And now it's being healthily corrected. <laughs> Can we please save this story for the uh, <laughs> educational channel? Yeah. I mean, it honestly is. It honestly is. It's the perfect example of supply and demand. It's a perfect example because what's so special about Tickle Me Elmo other than an increase in demand? That's it. And before that, it was Care Bears and then Power Rangers and, you know, whatever. Do your Air Force buddies give you a hard time about options? Oh, there's one of them in here listening right now. Uh, so, yeah, he, know, he knows how passionate I am about investing and trading and options. So, but yeah. I'm sure I'm sure I annoy people because that's all I talk about. All I talk about is is trading and investing. So I'm like I'm like a Jehovah Witness of, of investing. That's like all I talk about. Like, have you have you heard about investing? Have you heard about options? Let me talk to you about options. I'm like the I'm like the uh, extended car warranty of, of investing at work. <clears throat> Uh, Poe Jelly Wild Riff says, I love your channel. I have watched you lots of videos. Any books you'd recommend to? Yeah. Y'all know what book I'd recommend to him, don't you? Uh, Anna Colling's book, The Complete Guide to Volume Analysis, Volume Price Analysis. All right, so we got a little consolidation here. We're having a little fun. That's okay. Sorry, it's, right. it's all right to loosen the purse strings or lo loosen the strings a little bit and have a little fun. But uh, a little consolidation here on Spy four twenty eight sixty five after a lot of crazy action. <clears throat> Made myself a little six percenter today. Not as much as y'all did. Y'all are killing it today. A lot of guys at work. Way back in July, they were talking about a penny stock called Clis, C L I S. And I was like, man, I don't invest in that crap. Why y'all talking about why y'all talking about penny stocks? So, but after eventually everybody was talking about it. So I put a little money in it, a couple of thousand, no biggie. And I sold it when it went up just a little bit. That was back in the fall. And uh freaking Clis went up to like like what two thousand percent or something like that. Like I had dudes at work making six figures off of Clis. So crazy stuff though. Crazy stuff. Do you see more downside today? Yes, I still do I'll still see more downside. Until I see something change. Like you see this little candle here, this big this big green that's that's forming. No volume. It's not supported by under you have to look at the underlying support. What's supporting the market? Price action is not support. Price action is not strength. The volume is where you have to see. Where the strength is. Uh, yeah, Anna Colling was the is the author of that book. Anyway, we are back inside the range. Four twenty nine sixty eight. We're right above the POC. Three fifty six here and climbing. The VIX is red. The bonds are falling off here. <clears throat> Starting to look a little bullish at the moment, but we need the volume to come in and support it. Man, look at that green candle. <clears throat> uh, can you speak about the OM session ranges? Yes, I can. There's also a good video in my educational series about the session ranges. I uh, encourage you to watch that video. But what it is, is it sets the morning range. And it starts at market open until 10.05 Eastern time. It sets the high price and the low price. It takes into account the wick. So you see high price, low price, and then it sets. We played our trades off of that. 
there are some guidelines to look at, but basically, uh, you have a mean reversion. So here we popped out. Now the decision here, do we go trend down or do we revert back into the range? Obviously we reverted back into the range, which is normally a chop, an indication of chop, which means we'll probably oscillate somewhere in here throughout the day. And I use these if we go trend up, which means we pop out the top, we blast through and keep on going. We blast to the bottom, or we usually play off the off the ranges here. Let me find a good so this is a good example of a range day, <clears throat> a large range day. So we bounce off the bottom, bounce off the top, kept bouncing, kept bouncing off this top layer, came down, and then we use this bottom as support for a while, bounce back up, and then once the afternoon range is set, which is these blue lines, you disregard the top. You disregard the morning unset, I'm sorry, and then you play the afternoon. So it's just a good little indication on where price pivots. All right, so bonds bouncing up here. Man, look at the green action, man. Crazy bounce up action. So we're approaching what 430.41. We're right in the middle of the range. What broker do I use for trading? I use E-Trade. More specifically, Power E-Trade. The uh, it's a web-based software. Do I expect 420 range for next week? I can't really say until I see today's action. You know, Friday it's the new it's the beginning of a new month. We might see some bullish action bring this back up because it's the beginning of a new month. Uh, but things overall on the one-year chart look heavy. So, judging by what I'm seeing, it depends on what happens today to see if we get a rebound or if we continue to fall. If we report, uh, if you do have a profile that you need to report, I would I would uh, prefer you put them in the Patreon reporting channel, which is here for those who haven't seen it. There, uh, and that gets we'll, we usually get them out pretty quick. All right, we have the cross up of the 8 and 21. We're about to have the cross up of the 8 and 34. We're at the top of the range here. Let's see if we come back up to I personally am not uh, looking at calls still. Like the call, the, the volume is still non existent here. It's still low. Uh, very, very large candles on lower volume. So now that was, there was no, there's no indication we we're going to have a $2 candle. It's just that that's the way it, the cookie crumbles sometimes. That's exactly right, Kevin. That's exactly right. Pilots have no problem telling people that they're pilots.
VIX coming down to 22. Massive, massive. Actually, that's one of the biggest red candle we've had since yesterday. All right, so let's take a look around here. Are we going to reject and come down or maintain the upward climb? Big wick right here. XLF flip green there. XLK is there. Let's look at the top eight. I feel like every day this week, there's been at least one tech that's led the others. And today is Microsoft. Everything else is uh, looking the same, kind of have this v shape recovery type deal. Uh, a little wick here on this red candle here at SPY. We've got this volume node on the five minute. I'm going to switch to the three. There's a three minute. This is why it's so important to switch between the three and the five. Perfect example. Let's look at the five. We've got a red candle. Let's look at the three. Red, red, green. <clears throat> I always like to look at the upper, the longer time frames to show trend. Now it's flipping green. This is a bullish action here, but look at the look at the volume on the five minute downward volume. But we've got this little hammer candle right there. It's all relative. It's all relative. Rocket diminishing volume too. So if I see the candles progressively getting smaller and smaller, what does that tell you? Buyers are stepping out. So. I do trade options on, on ETF, yes. All right, so we're starting to test the upper bounds of the day. Starting to look like a V recovery up here at 431.61. Uh, yes, I am MMA. I'm actually uh, pretty soon. I'll be out of here. I stayed on a little past 10 o'clock because I saw this little action coming in here. But yeah. Today's the last day of fall break with the kiddos. So uh, I have some juice boxes and a picnic in my future today. Should be good. Maybe, maybe an ice cream. Go down to the DQ, get some ice cream, you know. 430.79. We're right at this POC, the five-minute POC. Is it possible to day trade options? Yes, it is. Uh, I highly encourage you to head over to my educational channel. It, it lays out a lot of how to get started and how I think about uh, how, how I think about options trading. So that's a big that's a big answer. It's a big conversation. Maybe head over to the Home Depot, Bed Bath and Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if I have enough time. It's a big day. Options noob. I'm headed on vacation. Won't be around for a week. I know you'll miss my valuable insight and expertise. Thanks, Hobson Dude. Thanks for being here. I will miss you. Old school reference. There you go.
Coming up to the top. My portfolio has made a good old A recovery. What kind of juice box? I don't know. I got to see what we got. All right, so VIX is at this pivot, $22 pivot. We kind of bounced off of it here, here, and we'll see if we can do it again here. We're right at the top of this range. We got the POC. We're at the top of the bodies of these candles right here. Yes, we had this wick come all the way up there, but that's not supported. We'll see how this thing acts as it continues to fall. What does POC mean? Pri uh, point of control. There you go. So you've got right here, you've got this histogram, this gray histogram. That's called the volume profile. On this volume profile, it indicates the highest volume, the distribution of volume on any of these nodes. And that's right here. The point of control. It's different for different time frames. As you switch time frames, this point of control will switch. So right here on the five minute chart, the point of control is at 4.3089. If you go to the one year, for example, it's way down here, 417. So out of all the t past year, we spent the most volume right here at 417.68. You can kind of see it from April 15th until June 22nd, we chopped in this range. And that's why that point of control is there because of this consolidation right here. We spent the longest time frame, three months right here. That's why you got that POC. Are trap patterns credible? No, they're not. Like even the best pattern is like only right like 50% of the time, 60% of the time. So, yeah. Uh, there is a link to my YouTube channel and just go into the playlist section and click ed educational playlist and that'll direct you to all of my uh, videos there. Yeah, the problem with patterns is that it's it's very easy to let your bias creep in. Literally, I mean, you could go to Twitter and type in the, the dollar sign SPY ticker and go look. Half the people see an ascending triangle. Half the people see at whatever, whatever a head and shoulders is. 
half the people see something else. It's just, you know, and one guy's got like two, like 20,000 followers. He's like, yeah, head and shoulders pattern all the way. And the next guy's got 100,000 followers. And he's like, no, this is super bearish. You know, this is a, this is a sideways cucumber. You know, this cucumber is going to fall. And the next guy, it's just, you know, every setup is different to every person. It's all subjective. It's like, why bring in more bias, more subjectivity into the patterns? Just trade the volume. Just trade what the market's giving you. So I promise you the market does not trade off of patterns. Like it doesn't trade off triangles. It doesn't care if your octagon peaks at 431.27. It's going to blow. It It just doesn't care. It's all about volume. It's all about the price action. So. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. Do you still but you do you still trade between the between the ranges because in your other YouTube videos you met you try not to trade between the two lines? Uh yes, I try not to enter. I try not to enter in the middle of the range. However, you know, I I'll trade the I'll, my system is dynamic. If I see a setup here in the middle of the range, I will take it. But I try to avoid the middle of the range because that's a good way to get smoked top to bottom. But if I see a breakdown here, I will take a put. So. The biggest thing that aggravated the crap out of me with pattern trading is I was very bullish on Amazon. I was bullish on Amazon all year long. And from about August of 2020 until January of 2020, Amazon pretty much traded side. If you look at my one year chart between August and December, Amazon traded flat in the sideways chop range consolidation area. And people were saying it's a diamond pattern, which is incredibly bearish. And some people saying it was a wedge. Some people saying it was a rising wedge. I'm like, people, Amazon is going to blast through the roof. And it's like, you have to like they're not they're not thinking about the financial data they're not thinking about the volume they're not thinking about the market they're all they're thinking about is a stupid like they're fighting over which pattern it is and it's like come on anyway i'll get off my soapbox if we ever get in a bullish ascending octagonal cucumber i'm all i'm all in that's right see it's exactly right sideways <laughs> sideways cucumber Y'all are crazy. That's it. That's it. That's going on. That's going on a hoodie. That's going on a hoodie. The sideways cucumber. Make it so. That's right, Ghost in the Stream. That's right. Did you buy a call on SPY? Nope, I took a put on SPY earlier. I am no longer holding it. What's up, Lee Rack? Got some morning fitness. I got some fitness later on. All right, y'all. It is 1030. We had a little fun. That's 1130 Eastern Time. Uh, we had a lot of fun this morning. A lot of good conversation. A lot of good trades. It's time for me to hop off here. So we had this crazy action. 431.61 all the way down to 427. And all the way back up to 430. And a lot of stuff climbing in between. Massive red candle, massive green candle, giving a little bit of both. The bears and the bulls ate, ate today. What's going to happen the rest of the day? Your guess is as good as mine. What's going to happen next week? I'll let you know after the market closes. I'll give you my best guess after the market closes. So I'll still be monitoring the market in and out today. Uh, I'll be a little out of reach for the next hour or so because I'm going to spend a little time with the kiddos last day of fall break. And then uh, we'll see how things go. So... Y'all have fun. If you have any questions, please DM me directly here on the Discord, or you can post any of the applicable rooms at Options Millionaire, and I will answer as expeditiously as possible. You can shoot me an email, optionsmillionaire2020 gmail.com. If you're new to the YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. It helps me grow. It helps you all learn as much as you can, and you get notifications for all my live streams, as well as educational content that I post. Come over and join the Discord. Links in the description. If you want to be a part of our play calls, our education, our good, wholehearted fun. Join the Patreon. You can be a part of a great community. We have a lot of good times. 
So links also in the description. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. I will see you all at the latest on Monday at the earliest, potentially later this afternoon. So y'all take it easy. Have fun. Be safe. Don't FOMO. Make good, smart decisions. And please do not trade off of the sideways cucumber. Anyway, I'm out of here. See ya.